Oh, my goodness. Across Britain, there has been a rise in extreme oh. and specialist cleaners. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Prepared to take on anything. Yeah. That's horrific. I've never been sick on the job. And everything. Look, what's in here? Oh, feels sick. From dead body cleanups and hoarders. It's to the ceiling to potentially toxic levels of bacteria. This is about as bad as it gets. Oh! Oh, my God. Look at this. Wow. Britain's extreme cleaners are on call 24 hours a day. We are the fourth emergency services. I have cleaned this place to an inch of its life. Transforming homes... Wow! ..and lives. Oh, my goodness. It's more than just cleaning, it's caring. I can't believe it. My faith in human nature has gone up there. When people are in need, we are their saviours. It's time for Britain to call the cleaners. Across the UK, it's estimated that there are 1.5 million hoarders. When things reach a crisis point, extreme cleaners are called in to try to help. Like Maxine and daughter Jasmine. <laughs> You're making a spectacle of me now, Jasmine. You're what? making a spectacle of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> They've been working together now for two years, carrying out over 500 deep cleans. If I wasn't a cleaner, I'd probably be a counsellor. Mental health is close to my heart, and I'd do something within the uh, counselling talking therapies. Maxine has been running her business for 12 years. Today's job is an elderly hoarder in Luton, struggling in his property. We got a call for a gentleman who's got a problem with clutter. And apparently it's lots of clutter. Oh, I love clutter. <laughs> Hello, hi. My name's Maxine. Oh, I'm Pete and this is my dad, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. We're paying you a visit because you want us to help you with some clutter. That's right. This is your yes. lounge? Yes. There is a lot, John. Yes. What have you got in here that we want to keep? There's a television there. This is a television you want us to keep? There. Okay. There's some keys there of my little electric motor. Are they on top of here? No, or they're underneath they... it. What? <laughs> somewhere. Buried under here somewhere. I just can't cope with it anymore. We'll um, find them, John, don't worry. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll try and find them, yeah. John. 83-year-old John has lived alone in the bungalow for 33 years. His son, Peter, desperately wants help. I've tried for years and years, and it's getting worse and worse. I mean, it was a case of, got to call the professionals. Otherwise, I think the next stage would have been he'd have to go into care. I just want to help my dad and get him sorted, because I can't bear to see him carrying on like this. Are we going to have a look in your bedroom, John? Right, they like Let's try and squeeze in because there's not much space, is there? With clutter blocking the hall. Careful! Getting to bed at night is a little like doing an assault course. Okay, wow. This is Dad's bedroom. And Dad would sleep he here. Does, he does sleep in here. I don't know how, but he does, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Most of the bathroom has been completely buried. Apart from the loo. What can we do with all that stuff, John? Is it for the bin? Well, That's you have idea. to do what you feel. Yeah, it's, no, we, we do what you want, sweetheart. Yeah. With the floor space taken up, John spends most of his time in the corner of the kitchen. So you sit in this chair every day, don't yeah. you? Because you haven't got a lounge. I haven't got a lot, really. No. Oh. We're going to give you a lot. Yeah, I just want a peaceful finish to my life, you know. Maxine and Jasmine have just three days to finish the job while John stays away. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Maxine. That's all right. You. Now you Good. take care. Right. Bye. Wow! <laughs> this is a mammoth task. Look. <laughs> wow. Can't even walk in here, like, I'm literally by the front door. I'm not even standing on the floor. Let's get cracking, Jasmine. Give us a good... Mm. There you go. Yay, lovely, 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 lovely. 
There's loads of reasons why people stop cleaning. It could be um, loneliness, uh, laziness. Um, it's normally after a traumatic event. So, um, you know, after a death of a loved one um, or even maybe a death of a close, you know, like a really close friend. So you suddenly feel like you've got no purpose. We don't always get the story though, do we? We don't always get the story, no. We don't always know, when we walk into somewhere, we don't always know what's happened or, you know, the cause of it or you just got to kind of take it as it is and just get on with it. I feel kind of just understanding, just, is it empathy? Empathise? Empathy, yeah. Like, yeah, like, if it was me or my grandparents or my uncle, do you know, someone in my family, or my friends even. I would want someone to look after them as well. Like how we would look after them. From road traffic accidents to deaths at home, any time there's bodily matter to clean up, you need a specialist cleaner, trained at dealing with biohazard waste. Like George and Dino. Another day, another dirty dollar, mate. Well, um, dirty dollars are what we do. They've been trauma cleaners for seven years, which means that they can clean up blood, bodily fluids, and other potentially infectious material. After the murder or a, a suicide, paramedics don't clean up. You know, it's up to the family, it's up to the landlord to get, a, get in touch with people like ourselves. Today, they've been called to a one-bed flat. It's gonna be a messy job, definitely. Definitely a messy job. That's the business winning. An elderly man died alone and was decomposing here for a number of days. We're wearing category three safety suits. Safety is imperative. We could be catching HIV, hepatitis B, or a cold, the man flu. There is just one more vital step before George and his team go in. Vapor rub. We're putting a vapour rub in our nasal passage, basically so it'll tone down the smell. A decomposition can have a very bad smell. Although the body has been removed by undertakers, there may still be potentially toxic fluids left behind. Is this the ring? Yep. Oh, yes. There it is. There it is. There he is. Oh, right. What we've got is the outline of the body. You've got the, the arm, the head, the shoulder. That's his torso there and his legs there. Without knowing the cause of death, the blood and bodily fluids could be carrying an infectious disease such as TB or typhoid. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. I'm going to cordon this off now so the lads can identify where it is. So George uses a hydrogen peroxide spray which reacts with blood to find every trace. Now you see, the blood starts to foam. It's highlighted where the blood is. Even though we do here, nothing's gonna happen because there's no blood. But here, look at that now, even more. The next step is to treat the area with industrial strength disinfectant. It will kill anything. It keeps on cleaning all the time. Okay, so, Basically, everything within that sandwich looking part needs to be taken away and incinerated. Everything else can be sanitised and dumped, really. Until the carpets are up, George and Dino won't know how far the bodily fluids have gone. If it's gone through the floor, we might have to take the floorboards off. A decomposing body releases a chemical called putrescine, which gives off a potent and unmistakable stench. You can't compare it to any other smell. It's one of those smells there. You go home, you have a bath, take all your clothes off, wash them, go and have your tea, and then you sat there watching Corrie, and you go, I can still smell it. 
the boys have only a few hours to remove the stain and fumigate the entire flat. In Luton, Mum Maxine and daughter Jasmine are helping an 83-year-old widower. It's a huge task, as they need to throw away 80% of the clutter. Old rotten shoes. But keep anything that might be sentimental. Oh, I think this is um, newspaper articles of his friends that passed away. Yeah. They also need to find the keys to John's mobility scooter. We can see a sofa now, look. Which is a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. These are rotten stuff, absolutely rotten. Oh. Nearly, Lynn. <laughs> Maxine and her team have spent three hours clearing, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, my God. It's to the ceiling. Yeah, that's nuts. Look at this, a bag of, a bag of rubbish, look. By the end of the day, they've taken four tonnes of clutter to the skip, but the scale of the job ahead is just starting to sink in. Oh, today has been hectic. <laughs> We've managed to fill one skip, but I've lost the will to live now. <laughs> End of day for me, nearly. Many people have a hoarding problem. When it gets out of hand, it's down to the extreme cleaners to come to the rescue. In Luton... Look, what's in there? Oh, it feels... Sick. Maxine and Jasmine are helping an 83-year-old widower with 30 years' worth of clutter. We've got a big team on today because we've got quite a lot of heavy stuff to move out, so we thought we could do with a bit of manpower. More manpower because the work is as bigger than we thought. <laughs> we're females and females can do quite a lot, but I think I'll leave this to the male species. With the extra manpower doing the heavy lifting, Maxine and Jasmine can finally start clearing the wardrobes, which don't appear to have been opened in decades. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> is this a shoe made of bread? This is just untouched. Look at these. 1997. That's 20 years ago. 20 years ago! Wow! I can't believe <laughs> Long Life Milk was 28p. Well, Cheshire. value bread, cheese, 21p. Cheese. 21p for bread. They've already cleared half the living room, but there's no sign yet of the lost keys to John's mobility scooter. We haven't found the keys, so we're still looking. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do need to get out. Are there keys? Yes! Jasmine! We found the keys! <laughs> right at the bottom of the pile! That's my job done then. Ah! Can you go home then? I, I wish. Not. Yeah, you're not going home. <laughs> We're sat outside because the... <clears throat> we've kicked up quite a lot of dust in the lounge. Um, and there's nowhere to sit. The only place to sit in, sit on a sofa and relax is here. <laughs> Maxine has found a box of memories that she can save for John, including a card from the birth of his son. Congratulations to mother and baby. September 1939. You are six today. To John, happy birthday, love. Tracy, we peel back the layers of their life, basically, from current to very past. Absolutely amazing, love it. I was called to a property to clear it and clean it. And in the kitchen, in a little saucer bowl, was a goldfish. He, he was probably about that big and in about that much water. If I'd have got there a few hours later, it'd have been dead. I found tens of thousands of pounds in a house uh, with a lady. Um, her husband had died, and she had no idea that he had stuffed money in cupboards, in underneath the mattress, underneath the bed. I once found uh, Bibles next to voodoo paraphernalia. 
And I couldn't, for the life of me, I couldn't understand why you'd have a Bible next to a voodoo doll. George and his team so I'm ready, then. We're ready to go. are part way through an extreme clean. Can I get in the smell a lot more now? Yeah. Whew. A man lay dead and decomposing for a number of days before being found. It's still damp. Now George and his team need to remove every trace. I think that's gone right too, you know. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have to see. Once you get down to this level, it does get a bit too much sometimes. We did a job where a man had been wrapped in a quilt, his body had been there for about six days. I, c I can't even describe how bad that one was. Today, with minimal leakage, the floorboards won't have to be removed. Yeah, we can cope with that, that's acceptable. All the biological matter is bagged, but it won't be joining the general rubbish. If we were to just take that to landfill, then that could be infection seeping into the ground. Everything has to be incinerated. With the room free of any potential contaminants, the boys can now clear the rest of the belongings. Learn Swedish. <laughs> oh, he really did like his languages, didn't he? Yeah. Not just clearing all the rubbish. You're picking up little clues as to who the person was, what, what they did. We know he was a linguist. We know he loved music. We knew what he liked to eat. We know he was a small-built guy. We probably know him a, a lot better than a lot of people. Once the flat is emptied... Ready for the finale. George uses an industrial fogger to remove any last trace of that smell. We call it cherry flavour. That's it now. Job complete. Happy days. Well done, mate. Good job, right, please. home time, home time. <laughs> One of the worst jobs was a decomposition job that we went to where the gentleman had been an alcoholic and he died in his flat, a top flat, and nobody had found him for about nine oh, and weeks. He was a drug addict as well, yeah. and there was a lot of needles in that yeah, property. It was a big, it was a mess, scary wasn't it? job. Yeah. It was an upstairs flat, wasn't it? Yeah, that was nasty. You're in people's houses. They've passed away and we've got to take away all the items before we clean it all. You're bagging up in black bin bags. People's whole lives. Life. Yeah. Scrapbooks. You know, if there's no family, or even if the family say, no, I don't want it. That's sad. Well, That's what family, it comes down to. Yeah, the family, no, I don't want it. You know, 90 years on this earth and your stuff's in a black bin bag. The saddest case that I've come across is um, to an unintended death um, that have been in a house. Uh, they died before Christmas. Um, they weren't found until six weeks after Christmas and had no family. And at that time over Christmas, that is a family time. Um, and to know that no one had been to see him, no one had known he was in there or had gone, and it, that was probably the, the saddest job that I've, I've been on, to know that no one was there for him. In Luton, Maxine and Jasmine are coming to the end of their job, one of the worst hoarding cases in years. Ah! Ah, oh, spider! After removing seven tons of clutter, they're on the final push to get the place ready for John's return. Day's nearly come to an end, I cannot wait. Two hours later, John and Peter are back to see the final results. I feel a little, little bit uh, wobbly in my stomach because seeing what's going to happen, I don't know. Hopefully you better walk around in there now. Yes. Before, John's house was overrun with 30 years' worth of clutter and belongings. It's taken Maxine, Jasmine and a team of four cleaners three days to clear and clean. Come on in, my love. Oh. Come on in. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, yes, they're the ones. <laughs> yeah. You found them, then? We did, John. That's for my electric motor. A little zoomer. <laughs> Previously, John's bathroom was little more than a store cupboard. Actually, see, there's a bath there now. Yeah. And a sink. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
and at bedtime he had to scale a mountain of clutter to get onto his mattress. Now, with a new bed, he can get a proper night's sleep. There you go, Dad, you can get in yeah. your bedroom now. Yeah. <laughs> Are you pleased, Dad? Yeah, very pleased, yeah, thank oh, you. Oh, that's lovely. That I'm is so nice glad. of you. You've worked hard. Oh. Worked very hard. We can get in there, put new carpets, decorate it, and hopefully he'll have a nice, comfortable life, and his grandchildren can come visit him, his friends, and have a lot happier life and a better social life. Are you pleased with all the distress? Oh, yes, yeah, more than so, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, it's great. Great improvement. Thank you for finding all my goodies. For the first time in 30 years, John can enjoy his surroundings. A lovely, lovely feeling to see all these here, uh, things that I haven't seen for a while, yeah. They uh, become like old friends to you, don't they? Uh, it's a bit of you. So happy <laughs> that he's happy. <laughs> Wow. Oh, his reaction was just absolutely amazing. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> well done, Captain. Kiss. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Across Britain, there's been a rise in extreme and specialist cleaners. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Prepared to take on anything. Yeah. That's horrific. I've never been sick on the job. And everything. Oh. Look what's in here! Oh, it feels sick. From dead body cleanups and hoarders. It's too seething. To potentially toxic levels of bacteria. This is about as bad as it gets. Oh, oh my God. Look at this. Wow. Britain's extreme cleaners are on call 24 hours a day. We are the fourth emergency service here. I have cleaned this place to an inch of its life. Transforming homes. Wow! And lives. Oh, my goodness. It's more than just cleaning, it's caring. I can't believe it. My faith in human nature has gone up there. When people are in need, we are their saviours. It's time for Britain to call the cleaners. With growing numbers of elderly people in the UK, more and more pensioners are struggling to cope with household chores. When the problem gets out of hand, it's the extreme cleaners who get called in. Like Maxine and daughter Jasmine. I can smell the food, no talking, while I'm passing the food. OK. Hungry, bad-tempered or irritable as a result of hunger. <laughs> oh, that's just ridiculous. 23-year-old Jasmine joined Mum Maxine's extreme cleaning business two years ago. Working together is it's quite lovely, really. I like working with Jasmine. She kind, Jasmine kind of calms me down. Yeah. Today, Maxine and Jasmine are in Luton to meet Craig, who's struggling to care for his elderly dad, George. Hi, great Hello. to see you. Great to see you. Craig has recently moved back home from abroad to care for his 84-year-old father, who has a heart condition. That's when he found the house in a state. Oh, how long has this place been like this, Craig? Well, my dad moved in in the kind of late 80s, mm -hmm. but it's never really been thoroughly clean. So it's been like decades, really. Yeah. George moved into the house after the death of his wife, but increasingly found it difficult to cope. The fridge really needs cleaning. It does work, but he likes to unplug it. Why does Dad unplug it? He thinks it uses too much electricity. Oh. <laughs> now Craig has to juggle caring for his dad full time with looking after the house. I've done little bits, but it feels hard to have the time and energy to do the whole house. It does feel overwhelming. As well as a thorough deep clean, they also need some order in his cluttered and neglected bedroom. It's just too much for me, I yes. think, because yes. it's just years of stuff. Yeah. So it'd be good to get the outside help yeah. to come in. He would enjoy, I think, having an organised, nice bedroom, definitely. Yes. Hello. We've come to help you and your son out. Have you? How yes. Happened? We're going to make it special for you I and your agree. son. For you and Craig, OK? Yes. My prayers have been answered. <laughs> oh. 
Craig and George are leaving the house for three days while the deep clean takes place. Bye bye. Lovely to see you. That's okay. You. And not to worry. And up. Here we go. Right. Tilt it to the side now. First, the kitchen floorboards need a thorough going over to tackle the ingrained dirt. Time to bring in the industrial scrubber. Craig said this, this place hasn't seen <laughs> anything, any, well, he didn't say any water, but it hasn't been cleaned for a long, long, long time. OK, there it is. Can you see that, Jasmine? Mm -hmm. wow. Wooden floors can take years of abuse. The best way to naturally disinfect them is to clean them with a mixture of water and vinegar. Look at this, Jasmine. Ah, and look at this. Wow. A pig would love this. <laughs> Can I have a go? Worst part of the job for me, when I get left cleaning the fridge. <laughs> That's never a good job. <laughs> Whoever opens the fridge has to clean the fridge. <laughs> I think an oven is one of the hardest. An oven's a challenge, it really is, yeah. because an oven can have 25 Christmases in it, you know? <laughs> 32 turkeys, <laughs> you know? It really can be baked and baked and baked. The worst part for me is going into a kitchen that is totally falling apart. The cupboards are old and tatty. And if you touch them, they'll fall off. That's the most frustrating part for me. With 16 million hospital admissions each year across the UK, there are growing numbers of people too sick to care for their homes. When properties become severely neglected, it's the extreme cleaners who step in, like Yvonne and Angela. We can't save lives, but we can change lives. They've been running their business for nearly 20 years and specialise in deep cleaning. We're from an army background family, so we've always been brought up to keep things clean and tidy. Clean and tidy. Our granddad was a sergeant major in the army and we knew that we had to keep our bedrooms tidy at all times. Doesn't look too scary. Look at those yellow curtains and the inside of the windows. We've had to come in at quite short notice today to get this job done as quickly as possible, so I think by the sounds of it, we may have our work cut out. Definitely think we've got tobacco, stainings on the ceiling, the windows, everything is extremely yellow in here. The elderly resident is in hospital recovering from pneumonia. He can't come home until the caravan has been given a deep clean. This certainly needs a good scrub, doesn't it? It certainly does. Oh, my God. Look at that cooker. That's grim. Oh, my God. Oh, my life. We need a chisel on that. Oh, look at the sink. We're tossing a coin as to who's cleaning this one, I tell you. Whose turn is it? Yours! <laughs> I did last week. It's week's. usually my turn. The poorly man's family had tried to help, but the caravan was just too dirty. I realised that it had got beyond anything that I could deal with. We needed somebody who was professional to do it. It just all got dirty too quickly for him. It ran away. He says, it's a house behaving badly. That's what he calls it. The elderly resident hopes to come home tomorrow, leaving them just one day for a deep clean. Looking gorgeous or what? A lot of this is nicotine. It really does make such a mess. Absolutely. Sticks, Ange, doesn't it? Did this is coming off the wood. It does stick to wood the worst, Ange, doesn't it? Yeah. Nicotine stains aren't just unsightly. The sticky residue contains chemicals which can be toxic too. If this is what it does to a plastic door, what does it do to your insides? 
Look at that. So bad. When we looked at this this morning, I didn't actually think it was as bad as this, but this everywhere is nicotine. That is, as you can see, look at it. Microfiber cloths are absolutely brilliant for doing this. We think they're amazing for cleaning nicotine. Magic! <laughs> In the bathroom, Angela has drawn the short straw. Well, that isn't, does not smell pleasant. Open the window. No, Can't, no, it's locked. Are you joking? No. Seriously. Up and down the UK, when people in crisis are struggling to cope, it is often extreme cleaners who are called in to help, like George and Dino. Hopefully, it'll be better than the last one, and even more so, less smelly. <laughs> An extreme cleaning team who've worked together for the last six years. If my wife seen how hard I worked, you know, on someone else's property, she'd, come, she'd beat me to death. You know, she would say, why can't you do that in ours? Because I'd just tell us today, because I'm getting paid for it, that's why. Today, they're in Stevenage on an urgent job. A pensioner has been unable to clean her three-bed house for the last two years and desperately needs help. <sighs> this will have to come up. It's uncleanable. We can't polish a turd, as we say in our industry. What we know about the lady in question is that she's ill. She has cancer, so she cannot do a normal everyday chores. And I think over the time period, that's built up. So we've come in to, to give her a hand to take that problem away from her. As the owner has undergone cancer treatment, it is vital that the place is clean and hygienic to help her recovery but George has spotted a possible infestation. Oh, look at that there. That's definitely a dead mouse. It's right there. He's not looking too happy. I think he probably died fat. <laughs> Mice can transmit diseases like salmonella and hantavirus through biting fleas and ticks. Well, that's, um, that's a mouse nest, because they don't eat plastic bags. I was going to keep a few of them, but now I'm not, so it'll be contaminated. They definitely had a fun time on top of the fridge. I think it's time we take out this fridge and see what's behind there. Okay. Yeah, OK. What's this? Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. There goes the mouse. That's just right in there. How's it? Hey, man, back under there. there. Yeah, one here, live. It's a baby one. Here, here. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. It's gone in the room. While the kitchen is getting a deep clean, Connor has the owner's permission to go through the belongings in the office to clear unwanted items. Cancer, to find you out the big C is devastating to say the least. But be positive. I'm beating it, it gets smaller all the time. I still have a long way to go, but I know it'll be fine. She just needs a little bit, a little bit of a helping hand. She's ill, she can't be having all this stuff stacked up. I think everybody needs a little helping hand now and again. I want her to feel happy. I, I don't want her to walk through the door and think, OK, yeah, they've tied it up, whoop. I want her to think, not only have they tidied up, but they've gone that little extra step to make me feel that I'm coming back to something good. I think she'll be happy. I think she'll be very happy. Yeah. After 18 hours of hard work, three bottles of disinfectant and a lot of elbow grease, the house is now clean and hygienic once more. It's great, it's done a great job. No mice, 
<laughs> they're, being, they're, they're being evicted. Um, Looks like they're not coming out to play anymore. That's a good thing. I'm happy. You happy? I'm happy. You happy? I'm happy. So, I'm happy. It's time to go. George and Dino can finish up for the day. In Luton, Maxine and Jasmine are only halfway through their clean, helping an 84-year-old man and his carer son. They've scrubbed the kitchen floorboards, but the carpet in the living room is so bad, it can't be saved. 30 years of dust and, oh, wow. This is Dad's bedroom, Jasmine. Mm. Wow. Let me have a look at this. Got the, you know, the ER, ER thing. ER on it. A lot of our clients tend to be from the army. And they deserve something back, don't they? Oh. Putting order to George's belongings also provides a history lesson for Jasmine. That clock is old school. Wow. What's that little hole? That's to wind it up, Jess. Wind up for what? For it to work. 1985, which magazine? Cordless phones. <laughs> Now, this is old. November 1961! <laughs> you was born in 1961. Do I look like I was born in 1961, Jasmine? I just know it's old. Oh, It's old. <laughs> With only 24 hours to go before Craig and George return, Maxine and Jasmine still have a mountain of clutter to clear. From the extreme to the everyday, these cleaners get to see just how dirty Britain really is. I don't think Britain is getting a dirtier country. No. I think people are just lazy nowadays. I don't know, people just lack the motivation. What I see is that more and more people are needing cleaners because of their lifestyles. They're busy, they've got to go to work, they haven't got time for cleaning so they use a cleaning company now. That's what I find. Going back in the old days, a house had to be spotless. The front step had to be spotless. These are traditions that we all grew up in. Those traditions have gone now. It doesn't really matter. If it's not clean today, they might do it tomorrow. But more often than not, it's nowhere near a priority. In Stafford, sisters Yvonne and Angela have just one day to deep clean a caravan before the poorly resident returns from hospital. We're going to buy some new towels, so I think we'll get rid of that. Angela is tackling the toilet from hell. That is a mixture of lime scale and unpleasantness. Well, that does not smell pleasant. Yvonne is not off the hook either. I haven't breathed through my nose since I've started emptying this. An hour of scrubbing is starting to pay off. Once you start cleaning, you find more and more. The elderly man's sister-in-law is due to inspect the property in two hours' time. That's bad. That is bad. That is just greasy. It's been a long day of non-stop deep cleaning. Now it's the final push. Ten hours ago, the caravan was unfit for human habitation. Now it's clean and tidy, so he can recover in comfort. Sister-in-law Anne is back for the final spot check. I'm hoping that it'll be comfortable and clean and that he'll be able to say, come and have a cup of tea, which he hasn't been able to say. Come and have a look. Wow. Look at that. It's the same oh, one. Oh, yeah. Remember how black it was? Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> Excellent. Just hoping that oh. when he comes home, there's a few things he can see and say, right. He's just going to feel welcome, yeah. doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's fine and he's got a lovely home to come back to. 
<laughs> oh, it's lovely. I don't even recognise it. I think he's going to absolutely love it. Do you? Oh, yeah. Really now you it's know. tidy and clean, you probably won't be embarrassed and you'll probably be happy to let people yeah. come in. I think, yeah. yeah, he'll move forward. I think it's a new era for him, yeah. really. Yeah. Where are you? I think he can pick it up from here. He couldn't before. It just was too much for him. But now he can, and I just think he will, and we'll help him. I think it's definitely a turning point. Definitely. We've done good to get that done today. We might look like bedraggled rats. <laughs> but we've we've done bit. it. Ah. Oh, ho, ho. Look at this. In Luton, Maxine and Jasmine are on the final stretch of their three day clean. I can get it nice and shining. This is 30 years. They've scrubbed the floors, unblocked the toilets, and removed half a ton of rubbish. Craig and George are back to see the results. Hi. Hello, come Hello. on in. Three days ago, the house was riddled with dirt and the carpet was threadbare and filthy. Coming into the kitchen. Oh, I love the floor. It's like I couldn't have got it like this, because it was just so ingrained. We have a fridge here. Oh, my God. That was, like, black. Now it's white. Yep. Like, yep. when you visit other people. Yeah, this is the best so far. Oh. I love that it's, like, see the floorboards, no dust. It feels like a proper living room, rather than just, like, a bit of chaos that we've thrown together, kind oh. of. Try your chair. Try your chair, Dad. Mm -hmm. Try your chair. Is that comfortable? That's <laughs> slowly, that's slowly. I and think you in... have so much energy now. I see the difference in... In, in here, yeah, because I yeah. think I was just... I'd go... i go and do stuff outside because yeah. i put off coming home. Oh. Whereas now I, I feel energised yeah. here. I'm kind of in shock. It's hard to take it all in. I think Craig can now look after his dad um, in, a, in a nice, clean environment. <laughs> And that was the object of the task, really. I just feel it's a new start for our life, like feeling more on top of things. And perform the medical. No, 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 no. We done well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Mwah.